Peggy 16. Rise of Iron has everything you'd expect from a new Destiny expansion. We got a whole new suite of brand new weapons. We have multiplayer with three new maps, got a new mode called Supremacy, got private matchmaking. We needed a raid. I don't think we could have shipped Rise of Iron without a brand new raid. Tons of new armor, tons of new gear. There's a story campaign with characters and cinematics, new public events, new patrols, and new secrets to uncover. Rise of Iron is about looking at this story that's existed in the Destiny universe, this character Lord Saladin. I am the lone sentry, and my watch is eternal. It's this journey to understand the past, what happened to these great heroes. The Iron Lords are gone, but our fight is far from over. And through that process, you're saving humanity, you're becoming an Iron Lord yourself, you're getting to wield a giant axe. The idea of playing through a blizzard is something that we've never tried, and you're going to see that in Fellwinter Peak. Fellwinter Peak is very interesting because we've never had the player fighting through a social space before. When you walk in there for the first time and the fire's lit and it's just casting glow up onto these eight heroes, you've been holding their weapons for two years. When we can take those elements of destiny and put them all together into one coherent moment, I think it's, it's awesome. It is time to finish what I began so very long ago. Come, Guardian, help me give my friends the rest they deserve. This is the Guardian's journey with Saladin. He's sending you out into kind of a land that's been forgotten in the Cosmodrome. You're going into Earth, but it's changed. It's actually expanded. You'll see the plague lands, post-apocalyptic sky. There's lava welling up from the ground. We know the devils have been digging into the Cosmodrome for years. They've been looking for something. Well, what they found is SIVA. It is a nanotechnology that can be used to shape things, but they're not trying to use it to build. They're trying to use it to destroy. They've started mutating their bodies, turning themselves into giant monsters, transforming the landscape, even of the Cosmodrome, into this horrible, burning fortress world. Hell's loose in old Russia. Every second we stand here, Siva's influence spreads and the Devil Splicers grow more powerful. Keep fighting, Guardian. After the campaign finishes, you have patrols that really tell the story of this continued infestation in the land. And we have a new strike that shows just what the Fallen are doing with the Siva. It's this spooky place called the Wretched Eye. There's this really neat boss encounter. A fallen captain has plucked an eye out of an ogre, affixed it to his weapon, and he's using that to sort of tase you out of your rat hole while this blind ogre just walks around trying to crush you. We also have a few reprise strikes that we're bringing back for players. We very consciously set out to create a journey. This is this arc of claustrophobia, space inside the wall. And then you get on top of it, and it's sort of this amazing breath of fresh air. You get this vista from the Cosmodrome, it's lit on fire, and there's this death Samboni who's just trying to crush your bones to dust. This giant machine with a ball arm, spikes on it. What does it mean in a raid when you've got to run? I actually want that tension to exist. There's something really emotionally powerful about going on a journey, reaching to the top of the mountain, and then crashing back down, confined once again. I think players had a lot of fun when they played Court of Oryx on the Dreadnought, and so we wanted to create a similar type of experience in the Plague Lands, give it this different theme. You ready for this? almost Thunderdome, Mad Max kind of feel where you jump into the ring and the walls get closed off and then it's just fall and start pouring out. Here they come. But then you get a giant flaming ax and you just start beating the crap out of guys. We thought, how can we increase the ways that you express the way you like to play? 
And what we came up with was putting different talents on the artifacts. The artifacts are these relics of the fallen Iron Lords. So you'll quest to earn one of those, and then your last step of that is taking that artifact to the statue of the fallen Iron Lord, fully empowering that for you to use as a player. Whether it's negating all the dot damage in the Crucible, or whether it's infinite sprint, or turning the fallen onto your side. Which is really, really cool, by the way. The artifacts that Tyra offers change every week. So there will always be something new and exciting for players following the campaign. When you put snow, everyone thinks of pelts and cloaks and hoods. It wouldn't be a knight's tail without a knight's armor. When you look at the Iron Lords, and you look at the Raid set, you look at the Iron Banner set, or you look at Trials of Osiris, they're all new with a much wider palette that players can pull from. And when you throw ornaments on top of all that, we're going to see a lot more variety in gear. So the ornament system is this really cool thing that lets you take some of your favorite pieces of gear, and then you customize this weapon the way you want it to be. You got your Raid weapons, you got your Iron Banner, we got new exotics, old exotics. You like sidearms? We got we got all the sidearms this time around. Gallahorn, enough said. Coming to the Crucible and Rise of Iron is a new game type called Supremacy. Defeat your enemy, claim their crest. It's a fast-paced 6v6 game mode where every kill you get, Guardian drops a crest. Picking up the crest gives you points. Their glory goes to you, Guardian. It's a constant battle over picking up crests and making sure that you're with your team and not out of position. If you pick up an enemy crest, you deny the enemy those points. Excellent recovery. We have new maps. We always have new maps. There's last exit, lots of twists and turns, lots of really good close combat. Then there's Skyline, a Clovis Bray headquarters building on Mars. It's a symmetrical, large map. The last one is Floating Gardens, which is an open map. One thing we're really excited about in Rise of Iron is the introduction of private matches. Can't wait to see what people are going to do. They're going to be able to fire up whatever match they want, play with their friends, host tournaments, have fun arcadey games. They don't have to worry about our matchmaking stuff. They can do it all themselves. Sometimes when I play and I have headphones on and I'm in that world, I, I get little chills because it's not just the effects and the amazing graphics, it's the audio that helps reinforce the journey that you're going through. We really want Destiny to feel like it's a natural world that you inhabit, but like it's a world that could exist, that does exist. The score is incredibly strong and the work that the audio team has done on this game, it lights you up. It becomes something bigger than just a mountain and just a fight. It becomes an experience and you hopefully get lost in it. That sense of fun, that sense of adventure, that sense of the unknown, I want to see that translate to our fans and our players. When you see your character at the end of the campaign, I really, really hope that you feel triumphant and proud, like, wow, I'm becoming an Iron Lord. Yeah.